Good news, everyone. We're back with more Futurama. This is Season 4, Episode 10. Last time, we had a very entertaining episode with everybody just getting younger and younger and younger. We saw everybody as babies. It was very, very adorable. Anyway, I'm excited to continue. If you want to watch the full reaction, check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, take a quick moment to leave a like and let's get started. Delivery boy, Philip J. Fry, reporting for duty. Dr. Zoidberg, soaking in brine. <laughs> Without me, there is no mission. I am the mission. We're back from the mission. We got medals. Good oh, work, team. And we really didn't. pulled together on this one. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> you got medals. I wasn't there, and you might have needed me. Nope. But if I'd been there, I... nope. Nope. L nope. Bender's great. Nope. Ow. Oh, got him. He's a very important man. So uh. I'm just as important as him. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's the, the most important, important man in the universe. Have, it doesn't matter if I don't do it. What do you want to do? And I mean anything. You have the power. Name it, and I'm there. You the man. Well, okay. Let's go bowling. Nah. Pender. Bam. Bam. It's okay, my man. I got you covered on your next health inspection. Oh, I really appreciate that, Mr. Mayor's aide. Compliments to the house. Oh, jeez. Better not let Leela see me. Hey, I hear Fry. Boy, am I <laughs> glad I might not make it back to my apartment tonight. Could you walk Nibbler for me? Uh, yeah. uh. Perfect. Oh, hey. Whoa, ho, ho. Smells like a 289 in progress. Failure to scoop. He's, oh, he's yeah. in the middle of it. At least I'm important to you, even if it's only because I clean up your poop. You saved the, the world. Eradication is but one aspect of your importance. <laughs> it took him so long. Our centuries upon centuries of waiting have achieved fruition. Ah, aren't you a fuzzy little guy? Aww. Stop that! Indeed, the fate of all that exists and ever will exist rests with you. And you no one can never know about it. Most important person in the universe. Wow. Oh snap! We're in good hands. Nice try. The feast of a thousand beasts is begun! Oh. You gonna eat that? Maybe later. Wait, the brains, I do remember, but no one else does. Remember because you were the only one immune to the brain's mental attack. Because I'm so smart? <laughs> <laughs> it's a genetic abnormality which resulted when you went back in time and performed certain actions which made you your own grandfather. Certain I actions. The they plan to collect all the information in the universe and store it within the sphere. Uh -huh. So they're trying to learn things? Right. Those bastards! Being brains. <laughs> Plant this quantum interface bomb, blasting them into an alternate universe from Whoa. which there is no return. Then Won't that do in that universe? Blast on this Scooty Puff Jr. Let's go through this once more from the start. Your missing brainwave makes you invisible to them, so long as you avoid intense thinking. <laughs> Sorry, what? I wasn't paying attention. That is most wise. <laughs> Who? Who? Oh, Fry. Now the infosphere will open its protective crust so as to scan itself, completing its thousand-year task. <gasps> It's a mega mind. Not like that kind of mega mind. Once you press the detonator, you will have 60 seconds for an exciting escape. Hey, wait. This brain knows everything about everything, right? Oh, it will soon. Shit. That's why you're supposed to be setting off a bomb. What really killed the dinosaurs? Me. Me. Unauthorized data access. Oh shit. Just blow the thing. Oh god. That broke uh -oh. horribly somehow. Detecting trace amounts of mental activity. Trace. Possibly a dead weasel or a cartoon viewer. Cartoon A! It appears we are in the presence of the fabled one. Quantum interface bomb? Are you insane in the membrane? You got it, Poindexter. Oh boy. You will be transported to the other universe with us. Trapped there for all eternity. And we'll form a tightly knit clique that you won't be part of. Well, at least I did one important thing with my life. Perhaps you should query our database concerning the night of December 31st, 1999. What? Yeah, got frozen? Oh. What about it? Oh, oh. he doesn't know. Ah, oh, Nibbler's there. 
Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, what? You took away my life. I mean, we you gave explain. you a... No, you can't. Oh, we, I thought you enjoyed this life. What is one life weighed against the entire universe? But it was my life. Aww. Wait, Fry, no! Well... It is possible for the Philip Fry to resume his life on December 31st, 1999. What? Really? I can go back in time? You could stop the Niblonian from pushing you into the cryogenic tube, and we will succeed in our plan to understand and destroy the universe. Yeah. Everybody wins. No. A human Poor Fry once stood on line six hours just to get me a ticket. Six hours? Psh, sounds like a real nobody. He's the now mayor's it's time aide. For somebody. I thought we was going skating. No, oh. we're not important enough. Everybody just hold hands until the bus driver comes back from his haircut. We came here instead of eating today. This might be their only <laughs> oh, chance shit. to skate here their whole lives. Who are we to say they can't? The mayor's aide. Beat it, kids! So, am I gonna get lucky tonight, or what? Oh, yeah. But we saw something different in another episode. The shadow was different, and it looks kind of like Fry. Pizza delivery. There he is. Gotcha. I don't understand. Yes, you do. You came back in time to knock me into that freezer, and now I came back in time to stop you. Well, why couldn't you just ask me? We were afraid you would refuse. Of course not. I love the future. Aw. Is there nothing in the future worth saving? Hmm. Leela. But she doesn't think much of me. You still oh, want to save her, though. She must be the other. It, uh, the other? What? The Excuse me? The other? You... What? You really think I would have had a chance with Leela? To save yourself or save Leela? Oh, that's an easy choice for him. Oh, the shadow is different this time. And just remember that Scooty Puff Jr. sucks! Okay. Only this time. Nice. The Doom Finger. Here. Well, thanks. If you ever need a savior again, just ask. Oh, just ask. We will. We will. We will. We gusto. Shred it. Oh. Aww. Hey, Leela. I guess I got this for you. Oh. I guess I got this for you. you. You know what, Fry? I don't care if you're not the most important person in the universe. But he is. It really makes me happy to see you right now. Then I am the most important person in the universe. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Yes! Yes. <laughs> We're getting to the end of this series where it was originally cancelled. So I wonder how many more Nibbler stories there are. I love normal Futurama episodes, but these episodes where we get answers to some of the most important questions in this universe or expanded backstory for some of our characters, they're always some of my favorite. Uh, Leela's parents, Seymour asses, Luck of the Friarish, the last episode where Nibbler talked, all among the best in the series, and this one was really fascinating as well. They actually foreshadowed this twist just a couple episodes ago. They showed us the shadow of Nibbler and what turned out to be the shadow of Fry, pushing past Fry into the cryo chamber. And it's so fascinating that Philip J. Fry, the Earth's resident dumbass, is the most important person in the universe, possibly in the entire timeline. And yet he feels so unimportant, just completely clueless to how much he means to the space-time continuum. And his feelings were so hurt when Bender and Lilo went on a mission without him. I would have thought that he'd be hyped about that under normal circumstances, missing out on work, probably still getting paid. But like he was really geared up to work this time, taking his job seriously. Who is this man? And he got really bummed out that Leela was going out with Chaz because he's so important. Mayor's aide, he's like throwing his weight around. I know I don't have a reservation for Elzar's restaurant, but I'm the mayor's aide. Like Elzar was already giving him a table. Oh my god. This show is really prescient though. Not too long ago, also in New York City. Okay, first of all, our mayor right now sucks so, so much. Eric Adams is freaking horrible. So many people were trying to warn voters away from him and from Andrew Yang, but people voted for Adams anyway. But yeah, okay, my point was several months ago, Eric Adams' aid was being robbed and he said, get out of my way. And when they wouldn't, he said, you don't want to do this. I work for the mayor. 
which uh, the two options when getting robbed are typically just give up the money so you don't get hurt or fight. And he's out here negotiating by saying how important he is because he's the mayor's aide. I'm trying not to shit on him too hard because he is the victim in this situation, but you have to imagine that he uses the I work for the mayor line a lot if he's capable of pulling that shit out during a damn robbery. But yeah, these people think they're important by association, I guess. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't assault him once they found out he was the mayor's aide because Adams right now is just universally hated. Uh, his approval rating is, around, is below 30%. I'm sure if you live in the US, you know how unpopular his predecessor, Bill de Blasio, was. And even at his most unpopular, he didn't drop below 35%. Okay, this is basically devolving into me complaining about Eric Adams for the entire commentary. But yeah, when people call out racism and it's hard to tell if it was actually motivated by race, I still give the people calling out the racism the benefit of the doubt that they're not purposely stirring shit up because they have to face so many little microaggressions every day that it gets hard to tell what is and isn't racism. But with Eric Adams, oh my god, he just weaponizes race in just the most disgusting kind of ways. Uh, someone on Twitter said he was a hypocrite for letting his friends park in front of Brooklyn City Hall without a permit and also double park and block traffic. And Adams responded, oh, you're attacking me anonymously online just like the KKK did to black people. They attacked people anonymous anonymously with their hoods. And I'm just like, what the heck, man? Oh. Also, he said that G if Jesus was alive, he would help him destroy homeless encampments and help burn all their belongings. And whenever his decision making has been questioned, his response boils down to, I'm the mayor. I have the right to make these decisions. And it's just, he's so disgusting of a person. Oh, it really frustrates me that we elected him. All this to say that like people like Chaz annoy the heck out of me. Uh, they think their position entitles them to being treated differently. And they're there for the power rather than what that position can do to help others. Like Adams was a police captain running on making New York City safer. And what do you know? Crime rates have gone up a ton since he took office because cops don't make people safer. Never have I been so disappointed in my city when, for what, than when we voted for him. All of this was just to say that people like Chaz annoy the heck out of me. They think their position entitles them to being treated differently, and they're there for the power rather than what that position can do to help everyday people. Oh, and Eric Adams was a police captain before he ran for the mayor of New York, and he ran on making New York City safer. And of course, what do you know, crime rates have gone way up since he took office because more cops don't make people safer. Never been more disappointed in my city than when we all voted for him. Anyway, seeing Leela kind of fall for Chaz just turned my stomach. I was like, Leela, how can you be so, so blind? But we've seen before her judgment has, when it comes to men, has never been good. Uh, I could barely believe it when she first slept with Zap Brannigan. Leela only sees Chaz for who he is once he rents out the entire skating rink and refuses to let the kids from her orphanarium skate on it because they're not important enough. I guess it's better than not changing her mind at all, but why does his selfishness have to negatively impact people she personally knows for her to understand what a tool he is? And geez, I've, I'm just getting to talk about Nibbler and Fry's adventure with the brains becoming a threat again. I've just been so wrapped up in everything else. Uh, turns out, the fact that Fry is his own grandfather is extremely important. It resulted in his lack of Delta Wave, which makes him immune to the brains. Totally forgot that he still remembered the first brain attack, and they didn't bother wiping his memory back then because nobody believed him. And the brains get to Fry while he's at the console and detect trace amounts of brain activity, possibly a dead weasel or cartoon viewer. Insulting your own audience is an excellent freaking joke. Uh, it was great, I really loved that. And then Fry takes all the brains into another dimension after finding out that Nibbler pushed him into the cryo chamber and froze him. He was so upset that his life was taken away, though... I remember the series premiere, he was pretty happy to have escaped into the future. The one thing he missed, of course, being his dog. Uh, then Fry was transported to the day he fell into the cryo chamber and can choose to change history. He can choose to remain in 1999 or the year 2000. And he was upset with being used and even said that he would have happily done it if they had just asked. And now he gets to make the decision himself. But does that mean that he always got to make that choice? I'm not sure. This is very confusing and I'm too tired for time par paradoxes right now. But yeah, Fry makes it back after saving the universe and is memory wiped, so he doesn't even know why he's important. But Leela is just happy to see him, so that makes him feel important, which is really, really sweet. I think that's all a lot of people want, just to be important to the people they care about. Gets a little kiss from Leela too, which he celebrates. Yay! Yes! It doesn't seem like this is going to be the end for the Nibelonian saga, though. Because Nibbler in the past said that Leela must be the other. 
it's not just talking about what she did last time, right? Because it didn't feel like it ha was specific to her that she had to be the one to uh, give that information to Fry. It's interesting though because this show was cancelled soon after this, so we might not have ever gotten the answer if the show hadn't been revived. It'd be super funny if they had that second chance to address it in the revival but still didn't do it, and they had to wait until the second revival in 2023. But yeah. Um, anyway, if you stuck with me through this entire commentary, A plus for you. Thanks for listening to me rant about Eric Adams a little. This was a very interesting episode though, and I'm glad Fry got to feel a little important at the end. All right, full reactions can be on Patreon in the link in the description below. Early reactions are there as well. Leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time with more. Bye, friends.